for the last month with that mist, that horrible stuff that's come off the North Sea. Les and I had a walk to the Humber Bank a couple of weeks back and we parked up at the viewing spot near the bridge and we got out of the car and went onto the bank and we had a couple of, we were walking for about three or four minutes and we just turned eastwards to look back and you couldn't see Hull you couldn't see New Holland, you couldn't see anything. It was just one big white mass of cloud and rain. Unbelievable. And, yeah. and then when you looked to the west towards the power stations, you could see the mist coming across there. Yes, it's not very nice, but nice to see the weather now as it's changed. And it's going to be very good all week, next week as well. So, yeah, get your sun cream on. And, Look after them. Plenty, drink plenty of beer. <laughs> Don't you drink beer? No. Water. water. You don't drink out of a watering can, you know? No, I must do. <laughs> yes, right. Anyway, good. Lovely. Um, before I start, I'll read the Bands of Marriage um, for uh, Daniel James Brooker, Bachelor of... Uh, Hibblestow and Laura Beth Ward, a spinster of Hibblestow. Um, this is for the second time of asking if any one of you knows any reason in law why these two people should not marry each other. You are to declare it now. But, and if we could just say a small prayer for them. If it, um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way you have brought Daniel and Laura together the love that has grown between them and committing themselves to each other in marriage and the desire to share their lives together, coming together as one. We wish them well for the future. Amen. Right, um, I didn't choose the hymns. Alan Smith chose the hymns. Um, so, I don't know which the first one is. I think it looks like it. Go on, this bit of paper. Will you come and follow me? Don't do that, I'm a, I'm a better. Is that right? Yeah. Right.
to remove this uh, pot from here. Sign them later. <coughs> Jesus promised that he is present whenever people meet in his name. So let us greet one another as the members of God's family. The Lord is here. The Spirit is here. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanks, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in the whole world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. Before the mountains were made, or before you had even formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The Lord our God is worthy to receive glory and honour and power. For he has created and redeemed us. Let us in silence remember our own faults and failings. <clears throat> we say it together. Heavenly Father, we are very sorry for all the things we have done and said and thought that have been wrong. We are sorry that we have thought of ourselves and not of others. We are sorry that we have done what we wanted instead of what you wanted us to do. We ask you to forgive us and to help us to be the people you would like us to be. We ask this for Jesus Christ's sake. May Almighty God forgive us. Help us to follow Jesus' way of life and guide us with his Holy Spirit. And our thought for today, the first Sunday after Trinity. O oh God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without thee, grant us, to, grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping of thy commandments, we may please thee both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I think is it time to have a, another hymn now? Yes, we'll have another hymn. And this will be See What a Morning. I don't know what that one is about. It's the one that Alan's found. <laughs>
Please visit him. Well sang. Nice and jovial that, isn't it? Lovely. Right. <coughs> Come to our readings. And uh, who's reading today? <laughs> Can I like it? Anyway, right. I think we've got a silver sub today for who's going to read for us. So, are you reading first, Christine? Yeah. This reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may increase? By no means. How can we who die to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who are baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we were buried by him, with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also might walk in newness of life. For if we have been for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, so we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So, you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. I am speaking to God. Now, Gospel reading. Mark. Matthew chapter 10 verses 24 to 39. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It's enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the, of the house Belisabub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So, have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, I say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to this earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
and whoever does not take his crossing and follow cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will take it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Right. Well, today we celebrate Barnabas the Apostle. Well, what do we know about Barnabas? Well, most of what we know about Barnabas comes from the Book of Acts, which gives details of his ministry, both alongside Paul and in general, as he travels throughout Judea and Asia Minor spreading the good news of the gospel to all that would hear. Now Barnabas was a Levite and would have been raised a Jew, most likely wealthy and schooled in Hebrew in religious foundational instruction in the schools of Cameroon. And there was a strong possibility that Barnabas and Paul knew each other as both had been taught at the same school. Do we teach religious instruction now in school any longer? I know when we do open the book on, a, on a, every month, it almost goes down well. The kids seem to love it. And we enjoy doing it. Sorry? They teach all the faiths. They teach something about all the faiths. Yes, something like that. We uh, first see his uh, name mentioned in Acts verses 36 and 37. Where he, descri- where he describes how Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. Barnabas's inclination for encouragement, support and generosity would stay with him throughout his life. When he saw Paul, then still known as Saul, had been converted by Christ and became a fervent follower of Christ. Barnabas took the then unknown disciple under his wing and introduced him to the other disciples in Jerusalem. The other disciples and apostles were afraid because Saul passed actions, because of Paul's past actions, not Saul's past actions, should I say, But Barnabas vouched for him, and because of this, the new disciples stayed with them and moved freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly about Christ. Now, whilst Paul was speaking the gospel in Jerusalem, Barnabas travelled up country to Antioch, where he established a fledgling, fledgling Christian community. Barnabas realised that to establish and develop the church would require more helpers and called upon Saul or Paul to assist him, um, knowing that Paul would be uh, who's sorry, deep in faith and an excellent orator. Together they established the first Christian church. Now the church flourished and many more were brought to the Christian faith both Jew and Gentile. Such was the success that many of us taught and preached the word of the Lord. Whilst praying together and deep in prayer, the Holy Spirit came upon Barnabas and Saul struck Paul, telling them to leave Antioch and to bring the good news of Christ to the Gentiles in Asia Minor. That Asia Minor would be Turkey and Greece in today's. Barnabas, however, felt that. Uh, so, um, so the pair set off for Asia Minor via Cyprus. They took with them John Mark, who was Barnabas's cousin, as their assistant. After calling at Seleucia, they boarded a boat and sailed to Cyprus, stopping at Salamis and on to Pathos. 
Whilst at Pathos, the pair were expelled by the Jewish leaders for talking to and bringing many Gentiles into the Christian faith. They then sailed on to Turkey to spread the gospel in Iconium, Lystra and Derby before returning to Antioch. Whilst in Turkey, John Mark left the pair and returned home as he was homesick, being a family man, and didn't approve of Paul's way of delivering the good news of the gospel. Paul felt John Mark had deserted them at a the time they needed his assistance most, as they were in real danger. As things were well within the church at Antioch, and the matter of whether Gentiles should be circumcised to become a Christian had been resolved, the pair decided to retrace their steps back to Cyprus, Turkey and on to Greece. However, they could not agree as to who to take with them as their assistants. Paul was adamant that John Mark, who had abandoned them on their first trip, was not up to the task, weak and unreliable, and he didn't want him. Instead, he chose uh, Silas, and then later Timothy. Barnabas, however, felt that John Mark should be given a second chance. In fact, their disagreement of who to take as their assistance was so bad, the pair went their separate ways. Paul took Silas to Turkey and Greece, and Barnabas took Mark, John Mark to Cyprus. Little is known about Barnabas following his work with Paul, we know he continued his missionary work in Cyprus, yet he did not receive the fame of Paul, who he took under his wing in the ministry world. Whilst the Bible does not mention how Barnabas died, he was reportedly martyred for his faith, like other apostles. He was either stoned or burned to death in Salamis in Cyprus. In conclusion, Barnabas was a truly a man of encouragement. He gave his life to the church and sacrificed much for the faith. He, along with Paul and other Christian leaders of the time, was instrumental in spreading the gospel across the land and converted great numbers, both Jew and Gentile. Because of him and others like him, today we know about Jesus. We can honour Barnabas by sharing our testimony and sharing the good news near and far without the risks he took. I would just like to say a little prayer, if we can just close our eyes and just if really possible. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the apostles and members of the early church sent out as your witnesses in a hostile world, enduring hostility, ridicule and persecution, yet despite it all proclaiming the gospel with power and being a faithful witness to you. Amen. There we are. That's a little bit about Barnabas. It's just a shame that at the end of the day that he didn't get the full recognition as, as what did Paul get. But, uh, this is the way life is sadly unfortunately. Right, okay then, um, let us now stand to declare our faith. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father who made all things? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe in Jesus Christ. His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? who gives life to the people of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. 
we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. Oh, oh, oh sorry, always with you. And so so with you. Let's just Read one another.
short prayer. Let me see it. Let us give, let us thank God for these gifts. With our praise, O Lord, accept these gifts which we bring to you in love and gratitude and use them for the good of your church. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, worthy of all praise, honour and mercy, honour, merciful and loving, we come to worship you and lift up our hearts in grateful praise. Together we come today as the body of Christ, because your spirit binds us together with your life and love. Let love, compassion and mercy be the hallmarks of our church life. And we pray for those who lead us in our worship, all our deacons, priests, bishops and lay ministers. In these changing times, give them the strength, guidance and blessing to continue their work for us and ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, hear us. We pray for our world and an end to all that frustrates your purpose. We think of those in countries wracked by conflict, famine, disease and poverty. Of those who face the repression and the discrimination, persecuted for what they believe or by what they are and those who are victims of crime, violence and war. Father, we ask for your kingdom come and your will to be done. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, may our church be the centre of our community. May it radiate your message to all who live and work in it. May our homes be centres of love, acceptance and welcome, where your love is woven into all our relationships. We pray for those who service this community, for our health, education and social well-being, and in other ways, for without them our community would not survive and flourish. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. In the quietness of our own hearts, we pray for those who ask of our prayers, but are only known to us. Those who ask our prayers gathered here this morning, and we pray for Irene Wilson, Jean Smith, Peter Robinson, Janet Emerson, Pauline Gainsborough, Peter Gallagher, Cyril Foster, Joan Lee, Elvina McNaughton, Joan Woodall, and Sylvia Kitchener. Father, as we remember those who ask for our prayers, take their needs and provide for them. Take their wounds and heal them, and take their suffering and comfort them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for those recently bereaved, the family and friends of Norma Rawlings, Marjorie Fisher, Elizabeth Lily Dobbs, we pray for those who have gone through death and now see you face to face. For their loved ones, give them inner strength and your unfailing love to support them in their time of need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And a prayer for ourselves. Loving God, help us to put our hands into yours. 
in simple trust, quiet confidence and eager expectation. Knowing whatever we face and wherever we may find ourselves, you will hold us firm so that in the days and weeks ahead we may live and work for you. You have touched our lives through your grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us rededicate ourselves to God. All through this week, our Father, help us to know you better and to make you better known by doing what pleases you and giving ourselves for the service of others. For Jesus Christ, Amen. And if we can come together and say the grace together. Are you coming, Steph? Right, I think it's time to sing our last hymn, which is uh, according to this, Shine Jesus Shine. <laughs>